chocolate. They're beautiful people. Top of the day. Today is Tuesday. December the 3rd, 2019. We are on year two. Well, today we are reading Genesis 25, 26, and 27. So let's get started straight away. Whew, it's cold out there. Out there playing uh, Tetris with the vehicles this morning. That's why I'm out of breath trying to help me get back in here. All right. Genesis 25. Then again, Abraham took a wife, and her name was Keturah. Remember, Sarah had just passed away, right? And he just bought the plot of land to bury her. And she bare him Zimran, and Jokshan, and Medan, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shua. And Jokshan begat Sheba, and Dedan, and the sons of Dedan were Shuram, and Letushim, and Leumim. And the sons of Midian, Ephah, and Ephah, and Hanak, and Abidah, and El... The, uh, all these were the children of Keturah. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. But unto the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac his son, while yet he lived eastward unto the east country. And these are the days of the years of Abraham's life, which he lived a hundred and three score and fifteen years. Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, an old man and full of years, and he was gathered unto his people. And his son his sons Isaac and Ishmael buried him in the cave in the cave of Machpelah in the field of Ephron, the son of Zorah, the Hittite, which is before Mamre, the field which Abraham purchased of the sons of Heth, there was Abraham buried and Sarah his wife. And it came to pass after the death of Abraham that Yahuwah blessed his son Isaac, and Isaac dwelt by the land Lo Haroi. Now these are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian, Sarah's handmaid, bare unto Abraham. And these are the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names according to their generations. The firstborn of Ishmael, Nabajoth and Kedar, and Adbil and Mibsam, and Mib. Mishma and Duma and Massa, Hadar, Tima, Jeter, Nafish, and Kedema. These are the sons of Ishmael, and these are their names by their towns and by their castles, twelve princes according to their nations. And these are the years of the life of Ishmael, a hundred and thirty and seven years. And he gave up the ghosts and died and was gathered unto his people. And they dwelt from Havilah unto Shur, that is before Egypt, as thou goest east goes towards Assyria, and he died in the presence of all his brethren. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac entreated Yahuwah for his wife because she was barren. And Yahuwah was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Remember, Yahuwah said, I open and I close the womb. I give life and I am the giver of death. So he prayed and asked Yahuwah, who is the only one could do it, to open the womb of his wife. And Yahuwah granted his request. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy vows. And the one people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. I mean, we really should get back into the habit of asking Yahuwah what's going on. You know, when we have issues, he should be the first one we go to because we can see all through here is consistent that those who actually went to him, he answered them, right? I read it again, verse 23 of Genesis 25. And Yahuwah said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her, her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was 
called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare them. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter and a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore his name is called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? But I tell you, when you get hungry, you do some foolish stuff. You know, he wasn't about to die. He was just hungry, bro. He was probably really, really hungry because he'd been out there all day hunting. But I tell you, don't make any kind of decisions when you're hungry, when you're angry, and when you're sleepy. Just go to sleep, get something to eat, calm down. Think about it. Chapter 26. And there was a famine in the land, beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Isaac went unto Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And Yahuwah appeared unto him and said, Do not go down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. So join in this land, and I will be with thee, and I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give thee all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swore unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of the heaven. And I will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar, and the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, She is my sister. For he feared to say, She is my wife. Least said he, The men of the place should kill me for Rebecca, because she was fair to look upon. Something I want to bring back up real quick. He said, Abraham obeyed, obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Yahuwah said we that... Uh, this is not too hard for us to do. Abraham did it. Sometimes we hear nobody was able to keep the law. Yeah, no, that's wrong. There were multiple people that kept the law, the whole of the law, including the prophets. Granted, the sacrifices couldn't be done because there were certain specifications that if, listen, if you offered a sacrifice, Yahuwah said, this is how you do it. This is the type of animal you should use and only do it in a place where I shall put my name. So if you don't meet all of those all of those requirements, do not sacrifice to me because I will not accept it. It will be rejected and you're wasting your time. As a matter of fact, I don't even require that. I require that you be obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. He constantly said that for some reason, the people, they just wanted to keep doing what they wanted to do. We're going to sacrifice you. Who kept telling me, stop with the sacrifice. And he said, you're just completely defiled through and through. You're not even obeying the commandments, so stop the sacrifice. He said, matter of fact, take them sacrifices and eat them yourself. Remember, sacrifices were eaten unless they were a burnt offering, then they were completely burned up. But every other offering was eaten. Um... Yeah, so I wanted to say that. And Yahuwah said, the law, statutes, and commands are not hard. They are not so far from you. And don't say, oh, they way up in heaven. He said, no, you can do them. All of you can do them. And you can do them well. You know, so I just want to kind of bring that out today. I really did because it kind of burns my buttons when I hear people say, oh, and nobody was able to keep the law. How do you know that? That's something you heard Paul say. Oh, you not, you haven't read it yourself. Um, and you heard somebody tell you that from a pulpit or somebody preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's how you heard that without going back and verifying what Yahuwah himself has said unto us. He said it wasn't too hard. And it's definitely not hard today. All right. So I'm done. Verse 8. And it came to pass when he had been there a long time, and Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety she is thy wife, and how sayest thou she is my sister? Doesn't that sound familiar? Then Abraham do the same thing with Sarah, and Isaac is his son. They did the same thing. Apparently, the consensus was that these people were wicked, and they would kill you and take your wife, because Abraham thought they was going to do that to him and snatch Sarah up, that she was fair to look upon. Isaac thought the same thing. Look, we're getting, this is the same king, King Abimelech. He said, um, 
how could you bring such a sin? Don't you realize that any one of these people could have slept with your wife and you would have brought a great sin upon our nation? Same thing he said. Same thing he said to Abraham. But he said, don't you know I could have slept with your wife? I took her as my wife, but you who will stop me? He said, don't you dare touch this woman. She is the wife of him and he is a prophet. He said, if you, he said, I, I, I didn't know, which he didn't know. Um, because Abraham and Sarah had conspired together. Say, look, we both need to live. So tell King Abimelech that I'm your brother, you know, so he don't kill me and take you. Isaac doing the same thing. So apparently they must have thought this about this nation of people. Yet Yahuwah saw that they were a righteous nation. So that it, I don't know, you know, so people just get overprotective about their own at times. They look, uh, they look kind of rough and tough and i don't know they might uh, let's so just tell them i'm your brother you know so i mean it had something had to be happening for the father and the son to do the same thing with the same nation of people yet yahuwah called them righteous he said i kept you from sinning he said because a great sin would have come upon your nation and i surely would have destroyed you because of him i'm like whoo boy ah, it pays to be on the right side of judgment okay let me finish I'm, i just get excited about this I'm read again I'm read again verse eight i'm gonna read verse i'm gonna read verse seven again and the man of the place asked him of his wife and he said she is my sister for he feared to say she is my wife lee said he the man of the place should kill me for rebecca because she was fair to look upon and it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out the window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting with Rebekah, his wife. Yeah, so they were in Phil Philistine. So, yeah, some of them, they was doing some stuff. But this particular people, uh, listen. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, the king looked out and saw them down there naked in the garden. <laughs> and Abimelech called Isaac and said, behold, of a surety she is thy wife. And how says thou she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, Least I die for her. And Abimelech said, What is this thou have done unto us? One of the people might have lightly have laid with thy wife, and thou should have had brought guiltiness upon us. And Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He that touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Like, you don't play with King Abimelech. He was the king of Philistines. Don't play with him. You know, but apparently he revered Yah. You know, so not all the kings, but in certain nations, even wicked nations, um, there comes a righteous king that Yahuwah himself calls righteous. Like King Cyrus, he was the king of the Medes and the Persians. He said, but he is my servant. He had a heart to please Yah, you know? So, I mean, if you read and pay attention to that stuff, it, it, it'll blow you away. Um, and Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He that touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Then Isaac sold in the land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and Yahuwah blessed him, and the man waxed great, and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possessions of flocks and possession of herds and great store of servants, and the Philistines envied him. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And they, they filled them all up with dirt. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of spring water. And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac's herdmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Esek, because they strove with him. And they digged another well, and strove for that also, and he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from this and digged another well, and for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth, and he said, For now Yahuwah hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went up from thence to Beersheba, and Yahuwah had appeared unto him the same night, and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bless thee, and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake. And he built an altar there, and called upon the name of Yahuwah, and pitched his tent there, and there Isaac's servants dig the well. Then Abimelech went to him from Gerar, and uh, Ahuzath, 
one of his friends, and Philco, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing that ye hate me, and have sent me away from you? And they said, We saw certainly that you who was with thee. And we said, Let there be now be an oath betwixt us, even betwixt us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee, that thou would do us no hurt. As we have not touched thee, and as we have done unto thee nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace, thou art now blessed of Yahuwah. And he made them a feast, and did eat and drink. And they rose up betimes in the morning, and sware to one another. And Isaac sent them away, and they departed from him in peace. And it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him concerning the well which they had digged, and said unto him, We have found water. And he called it Sheba. There... Therefore, the name of the city is Beersheba unto this day. And Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith. Love y'all. Be safe. All right. Love you too. Be safe. And Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Beeri the Hittite, and Bashemath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, which were a grief of mine unto Isaac and to Rebekah. Last chapter for the day, chapter 27. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son. Get to the baby. And said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Behold, I am here. And he said, Behold, now I am old. I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons and thy quiver and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison and make, my, and make me savory meat such as I love and bring it to me that I may eat and that my soul may be blessed that my soul may bless thee before I die and Rebekah heard when Isaac spake unto Esau his son and Esau went into the field to hunt for venison and to bring it and Rebekah spake unto Jacob her son saying behold I hear thy father speak unto Esau thy brother saying bring me venison and make me savory meat that I may eat and bless thee before Yahuwah before my death now therefore my son obey my voice according to that which I command thee Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau my brother is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. My father peradventure will fill, will, will fill me, and I shall seem to him as a deceiver. And I shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing. Girl, would you quit? I'm about to put you down. What? Tie the baby. <laughs> and Rebecca took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared in the hands of her son Jacob. And he came unto his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am. Who art thou, my son? And Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, thy firstborn. I have done according to thou badest me. Arise, I pray thee. Sit and eat my venison, that, my, that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Behold, for Yahuwah, thy God, hath brought it to me. And Isaac said unto Jacob, Come near, I pray thee, that I may feel thee, my son, whether thou be my, be very my son Esau or not. And Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is of Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, his brother, as his brother's Esau hands. So he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son Esau? And he said, I am. <laughs> now, get this whole story why it's going down. Mind you, Isaac is Esau and Jacob's father, which is the promised seed of Abraham. Get how all this happened. At this time, when this blessing was about to be passed down, the very son that Yahuwah had promised unto Abraham, Isaac, was blind. And Yahuwah allowed him to be deceived by his very own sons. Remember what just happened previously before Isaac asked. Bro, I dress sexy as what, bro? Oh, my God. I'm loud. Listen, you look like a street clothes teenager. 
with Nikes on and Jordan smooth. That is not hey, sexy. They think I look good. Oh, I don't care about what the little girls think. Stay away from them. No. You keep yourself out of trouble. And pull your pants up. I should not be able to see your underwear. Don't let me tell you again. No. Pull it up. Tighten up the belt. Crap, I thought the t shirt. Oh, no, actually. That was me. Sorry see for the now. interruption, people. Love y'all, dog. Okay. Uh, now, back to what I was saying. You who allowed the promise seed of Abraham to be deceived by his very own sons, which he will bring the blessing through. Now, mind you, Esau gave it up because he made a decision when he was hungry. And he legally get in and sound well, I don't know that he was sound mind. He was he was of sound mind because he wasn't starving to death. So he was of sound mind when he gave over his birthright, his birthright for a bowl of food. So all of this is going together. If you had put, I know you put it together, but I just want to bring it out just in case somebody see this. That it really wasn't paying attention, right? So now all of this is going together. Now Jacob, technically by default, because Esau sold the birthright of the firstborn to him, Jacob is now the firstborn. But Esau didn't get that memo. That's probably why he blinded this time, right before he died, so it the blessing can be properly transferred to. The firstborn, right? Okay, so I just want to say that. All right. Verse, um, I read 22 again. And Jacob went near unto Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not because his hands were hairy and he asked his brother's Esau hands. And so he blessed him. And he said, Thou art my very son Esau. And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near me, and I will eat of my son's venison, that my soul may bless thee. And he brought it near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now, and kiss me, my son. And he came near, and kissed him, and he smelled of his raiment, and blessed him, and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which Yahuwah hath blessed. Therefore, Yahuwah give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let the people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. I thought it was your mind. Oh. Hold on, keep still. Therefore, Yahuwah give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth. And plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. And let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curseth thee. And blessed be everyone that blesseth thee. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of the blessing. Ja end of blessing Jacob. And Jacob was yet scarce going out from the presence of Isaac his father. That Esau his brother came in from his hunting. And he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's venison, that thou may bless me. And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn Esau. Yeah, bro, you lost that title a few days back. <laughs> and Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that taketh venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten of all of it before thou camest and have blessed him. Yea, and he shall be blessed. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, O my father. And he said, Thy brother came in with subtility and have taken away thy blessing. And he said, Is not he... And he said, Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. He took away my birthright. No, let's get it right. You offered him your birthright. And behold, now he hath taken away my blessing. That one, he did come take because he knew you. You gave over there. He said, I'm going to need to hop on this train while it's rolling right now. So you offered the birthright. And he did. His mother, he, he probably would have missed it had his mother not overheard the conversation. But she had overheard the conversation because Yahuwah put her there at the right time. All things are orchestrated by him. Yahuwah rules in the kingdom of men. Let's remember that. So his mother overheard. She alerted him. It's time to put this birthright into action. Let's roll. I'm going to cook this meat up. You take it on in there. And Jacob was like, oh, you know, my father's not a dumb man. 
I'm a smooth man. My brother Esau was a hairy man. She said, look, 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 go get one of them goats. You know, just take this goat skin. And I'd have been like, ugh. It, I, I can imagine what Jacob looked like. Me, his father was blind. I don't know that I could have put animal skin on me to 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 go along with this these shenanigans. And then again, this was a serious thing. And they knew it, so I probably would have. I mean, I probably would have showered for an extra long time or bathed myself for an extra long time. But, um, yeah, so I, I just wanted to bring that out. He didn't, I mean, he just hopped on that train when it was rolling. But you offered, it was, it was, it was Esau's idea in the first place. Jacob was minding his own business. And you came in and he said, look, what is this birthright to me? I am about to die. You making some good food? And he said, well, you sure? He said, what is, what is a birthright? I'm about to die, huh? Take it, bro. You know, he said, okay. So at that point, the birthright because he willingly gave it up he did not it's how do you give away an inheritance apparently he wasn't thinking and it should have been taken away because you you just freely offer up something that is literally the inheritance of your posterity forever how do you just freely get it up for a bowl of beans you should not have had it anyway it rightfully went to jacob because you didn't esteem it enough to keep a hold of it i mean we know you knew how to cook because you just went out here and you hunted and you made your daddy a, 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 a plate of venison. You had servants so you did it yourself. But you had the resources to get it done to feed your own self. But since Jacob was already done and you smelt it, you weren't thinking, like, what is this birthright to me? Give me some of that food, bruh. And he said, you sure? Get, what is this birthright? Take it. Give me the food. He should. He rightfully lost it because he did. He didn't think it was important enough. You don't realize that this inheritance is for all your children and your children's children forever. He literally gave away the throne. He literally gave away the throne, and Jacob was right there to receive it. Yes. Okay. All right. And he said, "Is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times, and he took away my birthright. And behold, now he hath taken away my blessing." And he said, "Hast thou not reserved a blessing for me?" And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, "Behold, I have made him thy lord, and all his brethren I have given to him for servants, and with corn and wine I have sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son?" And Esau said unto his father, "Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me." Even me also, O oh my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Boy, it pays to have hindsight. Um, no, I'm sorry. It hurts when you have to live off the hindsight, but it pays to have foresight. That's what I meant to say. And Isaac, his father, answered him and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shall thy live, and thou shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father had blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then I will slay my brother Jacob. And these words of Esau her eldest son, were told to Rebekah. And she went and called Jacob, her younger son, said unto him, Behold, thy brother Esau, said unto him, Wait, Behold, thy brother Esau, as touching thee, doth comfort himself, purposing to kill thee. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice, and arise. Flee thou to Laban, my brother in Haran, and tarry with him for a few, for a few days until thy brother's fury turn away until thy brother's anger turn away from thee and he forget that which thou hast done to him then i will sin and fetch thee from thence why should i be deprived of both of you in one day and rebecca said to isaac i am weary of my life because of the daughters of heth if jacob take the wife of the daughters of heth such as these which are of the daughters of the land what good shall my life be she said i'm sick and tired of these women around here do not let my son take a wife from them send him so he can get a wife from somewhere else and that today my good people is the reading we'll pick up on the rest of that tomorrow so quick recap so i can uh get on about my day we read genesis 25 26 and 27 the stolen that's why i put the quotation marks around stolen it wasn't stolen esau would say it's stolen but esau freely gave it away because he was foolish uh the stolen blessing so it is day nine year two it is tuesday december the third 2019 so with that being said beautiful people 
If you missed it, go back and read it from the beginning. It's only three chapters. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and bless you. May you who will bless us and keep us. May you who will make his face to shine upon us and lift his countenance upon us and be gracious unto us. And lift his countenance upon us and give us his shalom, his peace, meaning his wholeness in every area of life and in all that concerns us. All right, y'all. I love y'all. And I'll see y'all in the morning. Peace.